Good afternoon, and it is afternoon. God bless you and keep you. May his blessings fall on you. I pray that all the people that in the flood and the hurricane, all of them, I pray that God leads and guides them to safety. I pray that they find their new homes. I pray that they know that God cares about them and loves them no matter what. And he didn't bring that against them because he's angry with them. That God cares for them. That there are many storms and trials in life that we go through, some physical, some mental. But we just have to hold on through it all. God bless all of you. Amen. Oh, wow. I started with that. They're going to come back at me on YouTube. Uh, that was James Cleveland, Reverend James, Reverend James Cleveland. Something got a hold on me. Because that's the only thing I can describe because I just don't know what. Well, guys, uh, I, I mean, I know we can't be trying to make me hate people. I, I, I know, but it's just, I'm just seeing so, so much inequality in this world. I'm seeing poverty. I'm seeing evilness. It's like I have brand new eyes in my head, you know. And uh, at this time in my life, it, it amazes me the things that I see and the, and the people that I, I have been encountering. Um, wow, well, something got a hold on me. Oh Lord Jesus, this has been one of them days. It started off when I got to work yesterday. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I just had a phone call and it pissed me off. Went to work last night. I said, okay, I had told you about the situation I had with my supervisor. So I went to work and I addressed that issue when I first got there. HR was supposed to uh, deal with it, but instead I was, can you come back later on? In the meantime, the supervisor comes to me. He's trying to be all nice. So I'm telling him, don't keep talking to me. Let's take it to HR. He wants to keep addressing the issue in front of everybody. So he pissed me off. So we end up going to HR. Oh, you want to go out to lunch? You know, he's steady trying to downplay it and everything. Because I'm looking at sexual harassment, discrimination. One of these things is going on that you choosing to keep all harassing me when I'm not, you know, why you, why you, what's this? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we get to HR. Nothing. But what I can say that surprised me, mm, God showed up and showed out, and I addressed him. <laughs> it blew my mind when I think about it, you know what I'm saying? I will get ready to talk defeat, but in reality, you know, I was talking and I had my head down because, you know what I'm saying, I didn't want to go there because I don't like getting angry. And because uh, when you get angry, God's right. You say things you don't want to say and things come out wrong. Plus, you, you, you know, you're not, you're not godly when you just get angry say anything and do anything. So I try to keep my peace. So in the process of talking to the HR and my supervisor, I went out and looked at him and I addressed him. You know what I'm saying? I basically told him, I'm a woman and you're a man. If you got something to say to me, if you have something to say to me, you need to address me privately. You don't need to talk to me in front of everybody because you knew they was ear hustling and listening to everything we were saying. And I asked you at first when we was on the floor, which I didn't raise my voice like that. But you know what I'm saying? I condone my, I, I carry myself as an adult, a very wise adult. So anyway, that was said and done. So when I got back on the floor, let me back up. When I got back on the floor, I'm going to put it this way because I don't want to lose place. When I got on the floor, the chick that was standing next to me, we started the job together. We've been cool like and she decided to stand up working with me. So all of a sudden when this happened, she's going to hurry up and say, uh, uh, he said that to you? Oh, wow, uh, you're in trouble. Why I got to be in trouble? That's the thing. He's a white man. I'm a black woman. Why I got to be the one in trouble? I don't understand that. Why I got to be in trouble? And I'm looking at it. Yeah, you young. Really, you young and you dumb. For real. And then I was thinking about it. And, you know, I just looked at it. And I, I wanted to shake my head because all the time when I'm working, I'm constantly in my head and I'm thinking and I'm praying. And I'm, cause I'm mainly trying to figure out why I'm here on this job and what I go through to get there. And then I'm like, I'm thinking about how I can help black people. I'm, a, I'm trying to think how I can help black people. How I can take and help people that are poor. How I can take and help people that are in distress. 
how I can educate people about justice, how I can be of help and of service to people elderly, black and white, really, in reality. Because if you come to me for help, I'm going to help you. It's not about color for real, though. But in particular, I'm black, and what I see my people struggling with, I'm trying to, I'm standing there thinking all kind of stuff, trying to go through my head as I'm standing there. But here it is, this man comes up, and he happens to be white, and I'm black. And because he addresses me, you automatically assume that I'm in the wrong, but you can't see that he could be in the wrong. That pisses me off, and it makes me, it makes me wonder why you want to help. It makes you not want to help your own people. It makes you want to just go and just recall into yourself when you see a person that can't even stand up and have your back. If anything, when that when he came to me like that, she should have been like out. Uh, what is it? Okay, listen. Uh, okay, are you all right? You know my mother just died. All the things that happened, because you had spoken to me earlier about it, offered your condolences. But here it is, when trouble supposedly came, you recorded, you walked away from me. You didn't even have my back. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. I'm like, Lord Jesus. That's why I said something got a hold on me. Because I was, I always been peaceful. I always looked and seen black and white getting along equally. But the things I've been seeing is so much inequality and so many, so much racism and prejudice. And but then I turned around and here it is that my black sister, you didn't even have my back. Young, I oh, you still didn't even have my back, and that pisses me off and that angers me. How we look for other people. I'm not gonna say we because I don't. Other people, in particular, black people look for somebody else to be. A leader. Uh, bring us out of this. Bring us out of that. Help us. You need to help your own race. But here it is. Your own race. Your own color turns around and sides against you. Does not offer any support to you. Like I said, I'm verbal. I mean, like I said, when the day ended, you know, like I said, with HR, when it ended and stuff like that, I realized they didn't file any report on what was said or anything like that. That said on that company, and I know the company I work for, they would not, they they not that way. That's the employees. But the employees had each other's back. Where was my support? <laughs> like I said. I say this to the day I die. When I lived in the projects, and I'm glad I came out of the projects. I started with Clarksdale Housing, then Park Hill. Man, I don't care what people say about the projects, man. And the majority of us was black. When I was in Clarksdale, we had black and white, and they had my back. Miss Bonnie's son was white. Miss Bonnie was white. We supported each other, Mr. Boone, Mrs. Boone, all of us. We supported each other. We was neighbors. That's why, why I say it's difficult for me to start seeing this difference in race. I never seen it before. We always had it. We was poor. So we had each other's back. Poor people had each other's back. When I was in the projects, man, some pop out. We had, I ain't talking about just violence. I'm talking about somebody said something. Somebody come out from the hood and try to do something to you and talk crazy to you. Please, you when you address a person that lives in private, you address it a private. That's what when I grew up in the when I, I was, last time I was in Park Hill was two thousand and seven, I think. <laughs> I've been back so many times. Hello, Building Thirty Two. Shout out, you know. I I've been there so many times, but like I said, each time I got boosted up. I didn't have no whole lot of confrontation. I didn't have all that argument, you know. Yeah, it was a lot of killing, whatever. It's violence everywhere. But like I said, when he came to it, I didn't worry about being hungry. I didn't worry about being uh 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 attacked or anything. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe it hurt, occurs with some people, but I didn't worry about it. I know if something popped out down there, they had my back. We looked out for one another. Even the store, the Jewish store owners and stuff like that. Mr. Saul. You know, if you had a problem, if you didn't really, really, truly have any money, Mr. Sauer would take and help you out. You know what I'm saying? Did, you know, here, take this now. When you get get your money, whatever, you know what I'm saying, bring it back. Who does that? That's, that's the type of love that I came from. I don't know. You can call it project love or whatever, but that's where I came from. Mr. Sauer, Lord, I miss it, you know. 
I don't know, I think he passed and they finally just uh, tore down the store up there in Park Hill, but man, everybody know when we was up there, man, we looked out for one another. We looked out for one another. We cared about each other, you know, a genuine love. Yeah, so, so, so a lot of things happen, but I'm a genuine and stuff like that. We looked out. We watched over each other's kids and stuff like that. My daughter strayed off one day, and I'm looking for her. You know, I had heard some gunshots, and I'm running around trying to find my daughter. This guy said, what she got on? <laughs> it's called hood love. Y'all know nothing about this, some of you. But that's called hood love. He said, what she got on? I said, I described what she had on. You know, I always make sure you know what your kids have on. In the hood or out of the hood. And I'm really saying this project is not a hood. It was a society within a society. It was home, sweet home. And uh, I described what she had on. He said, yeah, I seen that she went that way. You want me to help you look for her? Yeah, that's how we do it. But here it is, I'm at work. <laughs> you gonna turn around and leave me alone. Please. Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, sometimes I, I wanna say black and then black. <laughs> Colored and black, African American. I mean, sometimes it seems like there is a distinction. But like I said, where I came from, you had each other's back. You looked out for one another. <laughs> you know. I still have a friend, 30 something. Oh man, me and Bob Ron, we've been friends for, oh my God, oh my God, we was what, nine, oh, I, don't even, I think we was eight, probably eight years old. It's 2017. We've been friends all this time. And I mean, wow, you know, we've been through ups and downs and everything, trials and tribulations. Her mother passed, and now my mother passed, you know what I'm saying? And, but, True blood, you know what I'm saying? She live in Beach of Turs, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, wow, man, we still cool, you know. But she got my back. If something pop up, I'm going get my back. I got her back. I love her kids. She love my kids. I, I don't, I, mm, I don't know. She just ripped me yet last night when she did that. And uh, <laughs> so me and my supervisor, you know, uh, I explained to him about coming up on me, getting out close to me, bumping against me, everything I'm saying, but he tried to change it around, so you know how that go. You already know the outcome of the situation. He tried to change it, but then at the end of the day, it was basically kind of squashed, and, and and we left it at that, you know what I'm saying? I went on to my little lunch break. I came back in, you know, he looked at me with that look like, okay, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, so he didn't address me throughout the night, but, um, uh, I'm not going to worry about it. I guess it's a test or whatever, you know. You know, Like I said, uh, I'm going to look into finding me somewhere else to go, which I had basically had begun when I was, when he first ad uh, addressed me uh, uh, in a negative manner. You know, I wanted to be transferred uh, back. Uh, I want to be transferred, so I'm going to look into that again. But like I said, I don't want to get out of God's will. So whatever guy wants, but like I said, I'm going to look into that effort of being transferred. But here's the uh, the icing on the cake where I'm saying something got a hold on me. Everything that was going on, God just like, you know, it's like peace. A peace came over me and it amazes me. You know, you have to know me to know what I'm talking about. But just a peace came over me and a calmness and it scared me. So... I'm standing there in my mind, I'm thinking like, ah, oh, you know, she's going to turn around and leave me and walk away from me. I said, man, that's a trip. And I said, look at them. You know what I'm saying? I said, so now they all scared. Do <laughs> you know what that means? I said, oh, they scared. So now nobody want to be around me, which I'm fine because I don't associate with anybody on the job because I only go to the job to work. I don't go there to uh, get uh, uh, love relationships and I don't go to work to be friends. That's my divine purpose, any job I attend. So, I went on about my business, doing what I do, you know, and um, uh, uh, I, I got my crew, my Africa crew, and this tall white guy, he's cool, we always crack a joke, so he comes back, he wants to know what happened. He's the one that was over ear hustling and overheard some of it. I said, oh, they offered me that steak and baked potatoes, because I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm listening to God, and I'm learning, you know, I have some deep, deep thing, but God, mm, he's teaching me some things. So I said, yeah, I'm ha I had a, I, we just talked about a steak and baked potato, you know what I'm saying? Although we walked out, I walked out the floor angrily, he followed behind me now, but you know, 
they don't know unless I tell them what happened. So lo and behold, 11 something last night, who walks up to me? What was 11, 12, 12 something last night? Who walks up to me smiling and laughing? Oh, you back? I thought you were fired. I thought you was gone. I almost said a slang word like I said in the other video. My nick. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm just looking at, you know, I want a blaster. Y'all know what that means, slang. I want to say something to her, but it's not even that serious. So while she's standing there, she laughing. I'm laughing with her. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Now, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. In the day, I would have let that bother me. Now, I don't because I know that I'm, well, I'm not fighting him. He's not my enemy. My enemy is the devil. He's the one that's my enemy. I already know who my who my ad adversary is. So now nah, I'm straight, cause the only person can move me is God. Cause he evidently he got me there, and if it's not his intent for me to be there, then he will move me. So I'm smiling with her. She laughing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> what was said? So you know what that was about. She done ran down there, ran a mouth, snitch, ran a mouth. Ran all up and down there to everybody, running her mouth, talking about old girl did this, old girl did that, woo, woo, woo. That's why you went down to the other end, rather than stand down there and continue to have my back. You ran down to the other end, running your mouth, gossiper, snitch. So, I, 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 I just went around, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was said? I said, nothing was said, nothing was done. I said, uh, he, he was going to take me to lunch. Uh, I did. Now nah, I'm playing, but now nah, it wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Steak, baked potato. <laughs> I said, now nah, everything's all right. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, okay, because I thought you know. Yeah. Now nah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just proceeded to continue to laugh, and believe it or not, it wasn't a fake laugh. It was a real laugh. Cause really, I was laughing at you because <laughs> it was funny. It didn't die on me to the day when I got home. This morning when I got home, it didn't uh, dawn on me as I was replaying everything that happened. I don't even know her name. She knows my name, but I don't even know her name. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't know her name. Because you're not important. And you will never be important. So keep your tail on down that other end. Because I don't need ne negativity and the devil in my life invited. So, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we as a people need to stand up for each other, you know. Need to have each other's back in public and not in public, you know. But I thank God for uh, my African friend. They helped me, you know what I'm saying, to change my stuff. They helped, they helped me. They talked to me. They came over and they schooled me. I ain't lying. Now I'm teachable. I'm teachable and I love that. When you get to a place in your life where you're teachable, it's not like, how you going to tell me what to do? Who you? Who are you to tell me what to do? And, 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 and some of my, my culture, you know, they, they did the little, uh, oh, let's send somebody over to Susa. Send one of, one of these. Can, can you see that? Send one of these over there so they can take and try to uh, make sure she's okay. But now, it didn't suffice. I didn't say nothing. I didn't open my mouth. They thought I was going to run my mouth. Ooh, he did this, he did that. No, nah, I'm above that. I'm an adult. I don't have time for that. I'm about my father's business. I'm not about that. I don't need to run to you and tell you nothing. You're not my father and you're not my mother. My mother's dead and my father's dead. So I don't need to tell you what went on in my life. And especially after she turned tail and ran away. No, nah, I don't have anything to say to you. But as far as with my African brothers and sisters, yeah, they helped me out. They talked to me. You know, and uh, they they don't, you know, they they be standing next to me. They don't let stuff bother them. And it's powerful. They go about their work and stuff like that. They communicate with each other. And they came over. And when one doesn't understand English, they will take and get another person to come over and talk to you. Powerful. Did you see that? Communication with one another. Allies. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, you know. I might not understand what you're saying, but let me get somebody else that can help you, that can communicate with you. And, and yeah, 
and and they they taught me some stuff. Believe it. But like I said, I can't not. I, I, I'm not trying to allocate. Ooh, have an uprising and get the blacks together. Not on that watch. You believe that? <laughs> no, uh -uh, I'm not there. Cause like I said, but for the grace of God and my little angel, the little white lady, when she came up, and she 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 gave me all kind of. You know, that's why I said now. But like I said, the truth is the truth. It's not about black and white when it comes to you trying to support your own cause. White people look out for white people, but black people, nah, not all the time. <laughs> not all the time, man. Not all the time. And it definitely didn't occur last night. What bothers me more than anything is that what she did everyone else seen they looked the black and the white and the, everybody seen what she did how she handled herself and what a lot of people don't know said or unsaid spoken unspoken Africans look at black people differently some people in the in our in the black culture they say the Africans think they're better than us but what it is is not that it's a little arrogant but it's not without uh relevance uh some of them, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of people that I have seen as African, when they talk about they want a business, they want better, they get money and they send it back to their country, they, they want to build. They look down on the black culture quite often because they don't, uh, some of them don't feel that we're at their level. I put it that way. But that's due, and I see it's a lack of communication. And a lack of communication brings about ignorance. As I keep, we can plainly see with old girl. <laughs> I'm glad I don't know her name. <laughs> That's why I call her old girl, which I don't have to call her nothing. Because when you come at me and you don't have my back on something, I'm done with you. And I'll let forgive and I'll let forgive, yeah. <laughs> keep that to yourself. Get away from me. God says, knock on the door. You go and you knock on the door. If they let you in, you go on in and you sup with them. Sup means sit down, eat with them, talk with them and all that. Other than that, <laughs> walk away, wipe your feet on that mat and keep it moving. And right there, I'm going to keep it moving. I don't want you, no, nah, you can't come in my atmosphere because you're too negative. You know, you're too negative. I don't even know what that was about right there, but you can't come over here. Keep that on down there wherever you're going with your pill popping self. Hmm. But you didn't hear that from me. Yeah, take it on away from me. And by the way, you already got <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God just poured in my spirit about it. You will take and turn your back on me and walk away from me and leave me, you think, alone. While you're running your mouth down there. And you're getting together, y'all scared. Ooh, you know, oh, she done got him pissed off. Keep it on down there, scared to catch stuff. I don't want to be bothered with it. Here's real people over here loving on me and supporting me and giving me help. Also, you running away from me. But, here's the hit. I'm not going to say I'm more educated than her. But I'm going to say, talking about age, because she's probably 25. She might be 25. 27 because she said she got two kids so she's pro she, she's probably under she's under 30 you're running away from me because I stood up to harassment and an injustice that was being portrayed on me not as just a black person but as a woman All women, it don't matter what color y'all, we women, we all identify with somebody brushing up against you, constantly want to get in your face, and men wanting to intimidate you. Okay, I think we all on one point with that, because I can come at you at different levels, so it's not about just one race we're talking about, or one majority, one minority thing. So you feel me on that. But if you're going to walk away from me 
in that instance. But what she don't know is when we were in the meeting, <laughs> where the pastor, that pastor went and said, go to school. <laughs> My mama said, go to school and read a book. Yeah, get you an education. My mother didn't want me to go far with it, but I took a, she gave me a step and I took spiral steps. <laughs> yeah. I took many, multiple steps, giant steps, leaps and bounds. When we were in the meeting, what she do, don't know is that he made the statement to me that he could write me up. You know, I could write you up. That's an intimidation. She probably can't even spell that. That's intimidation and that's harassment. You know, you, you threatening me. That's a verbal threat. Legal terms, boo-boo, legal terms, that's a, that's a threat when you're telling me if I don't do a certain thing, what you can do to me. Okay? Yeah, let's break it down. He going to ask me, what did he say? I said, nah, you mean he suggest? Nah, he didn't suggest it. He threatened me with that. He said, I would take. Anyway, that's what he said. And uh, he said, but it is up to my discretion. Did y'all hear me? He said, it's up to my discretion if I want to write you up. But, oh girl, he already wrote up. <laughs> Hello. He didn't write me up. Those was my feet. I'm trying to relax my legs because I got to go back in. But, uh, yeah, he, he's already written you up. But you running away from me, which really, I can help you. I could have helped you. I ain't got nothing for you now. <laughs> But I could have helped you now, and it's not because I'm angry. It's because you didn't have my back, so if that's angry, then whatever. But you don't have my back. I ain't got yours in that situation right there. So go on with that. Plus, you ran in your mouth, running down my gossip. And anyway, and I hate gossip. I hate a person set up and gossip about you. I was ugh. Anyway, so uh, he, she's been written up for being late, coming back on break late. You just got to seeing some other things that's going on, so you're going to be late again. So he's already looking, him and the company's going to look to fire you. So, but you're running around, not even having my back and running your mouth when you could be over here trying to get educated. Oh, Lord Jesus, go on with it. Lord have mercy. She didn't even question the write-up. She just went on and, and, and accepted the write-up. I questioned the write-up because I said with the times that you was talking about that I wasn't where I was supposed to be, I was in HR. I didn't tell him what I was doing because I was asking for a transfer when I was there. And I was unaware that I was supposed to report it to him. But I said, I know now. Yeah. Like I said, hey, you got to talk to me in a positive manner. If you treat me kindly, then it will be more likely for me to walk to you. But if you give me a whole lot of negativity, why would I want to come and approach you and tell you anything or say anything to you? Lord Jesus, like I said, something got a hold on me. I don't know what it is, but Lord's changing so much. And, oh, Lord, I, I just don't, ooh. I'm like, I want to take his ass. <laughs> My dear said that. <laughs> said, uh, said, if a child keep on rolling, said, they rolling their ass at me. Said, I'll take their ass out and take them out and have them turn around and look at them. But I ain't lying. I want to take my ass out and just turn them around and look at them because I'm like, oh, my God. My ass, I just knew. And I just see so much. I see so much. You know, I see so much, so so much inequality. Man, I ain't lying. This is it's woo. It's just wow, it's wow. You know, like I said, yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say. And then I have to go in here and um, I'm gonna go in here and deal with the job. And to be honest, like I said, I'm not on no uh. You know, God's working with me. God's in charge of my life. I'm not angry. You know, I'm not angry with him because after last night, I think I by me addressing him in an adult manner and him addressing me later on in an adult manner, he has, we have some differences. But because we have differences, we don't have to take and become enemies. Now you see where I'm coming from. You see that I am of your intellectual. I'm not a child. I'm an adult. I'm go I approach you as an adult. You approach me as an adult. 
And like I stated to him, there's literature around the building that says a boss addresses a person in the manner that he had been addressed to me. A leader addresses a person with positivity, and I, 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 I gave him that. I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm being true, and I'm being real. This, you messing with my money, first of all. That's why I didn't say anything about it. I didn't want to say nothing about it. But at the same time, I'm not going to let you walk on over me. Not for no amount of money. Not right there. Believe it. I go through too much to get there. So like I said, I know God got some obstacles in my way. But <laughs> kiss and roll. What, right there? Oh, no. Like I said, like I said, I had to address you on a whole lot of issues. Not just uh. Well, you know, yeah, I you angry with me because of my race? Because I, like I said, I don't know where you was coming from. Do you not like me because I'm black? Do or do you have a problem with me that I'm a woman? Uh, is it that since I'm a woman, you feel that you can have any uh, 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 sexual contact, any type of contact? Because he he tried to dismiss the fact that when he stand every time he approaches me, he brushes past me. And then the soup, the HR going to turn around and try to co-sign what he said by saying, oh, yes, a tight. So I said, it's not that tight. There's a spot where you have personal. You don't need to touch a brush against me. So for you to sit there and co-sign what he's saying, mm, yeah, that needs to be addressed. HR really needs to be revamped. But, yeah, you, you, don't, you don't do that. <laughs> and I, Oh, yeah, you don't do that. Because I'm a woman, I'm not less than by any means. Because I'm a female, you don't need to get close to me. Would you do that with a man? Do you brush up against a man? When you talking to a man, I didn't see him when he's talking to the man. When he was talking to the man down there, he stood by the man. Let's address that. He's white. And the man down next to me that's real cool, he's white. When you were standing down there talking to him, let's do a reality check. When you were standing down there talking to him, I don't know his name. I don't try to know people's name. Let me keep that real with you. Because where I'm going, I'm there to work. Because I got a mi I'm on a mission. <laughs> like the Blues Brothers. I'm on a mission. I don't need to know your names. I know his name, the supervisor's name. But other than that, mm-mm. I know the HR's name, both of their names. Other than that, nah, I'm not worrying about it. But when he's addressing, when he was addressing the tall white man, he stood next to him, side by side. They both was facing outward. But when you choose to approach me, you want to turn around, lean against the box, lean all back. After you brushed against me, you want to lean all back, and you got to get real close in my face. Like you doing some type of intimidation. There's a thing called menacing. And I used to laugh until I studied it. I was like, menacing, is that legal? It's a legal thing called menacing. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Menacing is when you look at a person in a certain way, which a person sees as intimidating. You just look at a person, you know how you look at a person in the face, and you, you just keep staring at them. Like if you open your mouth and say anything, I'm going to run over and I'm going to beat the living. <laughs> menacing. It's against the law. It's called menacing, boo-boo. Yeah. I went to school one day. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's that's my major. Thank you, JCC, Jefferson Community College. But yeah, uh, Eastern Kentucky. Thank you. And uh, so they got to be there. I might have issues with them. You know what I'm saying? I'm planning on paying them. But believe me, yeah, they got, they got some powerful instructors there. Some really great instructors there. And uh, so I did learn something. My problem is really taking classes online. I need to be in a class in a classroom setting. I do better that way. So. Anyway, though, yes, there is a term called menacing, and it is against the law, and uh, <laughs> really against the law. Well, I wish they would have locked my money. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Back in the day, you remember your mama? Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for giving me laughter and removing my pain. Thank you, Lord, for loving me and keeping me when I need to be kept. Thank you, Lord, for watching over me and protecting me from each and every storm and every trial and tribulation that I go through. Thank you for being my friend, my father, and my mother, my sister, and my brother. Thank you for being everything that I need, everything that I want, anything that I could possibly desire. You are it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. I just had to give a praise right there. I want to do a dance. You just don't know how he how how keeps me. How he keeps me. How he changed me. Lord, he changed my mind. He changed my walk. He changed my talk. Lord, he just, ooh, he's just doing so much that it scares me. It was, Lord, it scares me. 
But what I was saying about menacing, back in the day, I remember we would go, I, I always tell the man, because I tell, I used to tell my kids and we laugh. Because I would tell, I got found myself telling them stuff. You know, you say, I'm not going to do what my mother used to do. And then you find yourself with kids and you end up doing it. And uh, my mother used to tell us, if we go over to my auntie's house, she said, you better not ask for nothing. Why? I don't know. Because we did, eat. we had food at home, but she said, you get over, you better not ask for nothing. Because my auntie, uh, you know, my favorite auntie, she had eight kids. And really, I, 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 my aunties, both of them had a lot of kids. But mom always said that, especially for my auntie with eight kids, like we go take food from them. And she would just say, don't you get over and ask enough. She asked you, do you want something? Don't you say you want nothing. As soon as we get over, we plan it out. And my auntie be like, do y'all want something to eat? And we like, nah. Do you want something? You can have some. I got plenty. Well, she always had plenty. Hot dogs, my favorite. Hot dogs and pork and beans one time. I never my life forget it. On these white plates, and they had a trim, and she lived over off of Maple Street. Off of 22nd and Maple, over there. And she had these white plates, and they had brown around them. And we were standing in the kitchen. All my cousins, they was in there. And she was putting out, had this big old pot, and they put pork and beans and hot dogs on the plate. And my auntie asked me, she said, give them some. And we look, and Mama giving us, <laughs> my mother gave us that menacing look, like if you eat them, <laughs> if you act like you're going to put them beans and them hot dogs in your mouth, ooh, just wait till you get up. That's how menacing, and they didn't lock her up back then, <laughs> but yeah, that's menacing. Oh, Lord Jesus. When we get home, we be thinking she going to forget about why she bring that up. Didn't I tell you not to ask, when they did not, you know, for asking for food. You know, she got them kids to feed it. You're going to ask for some. You get hard head, make a soft. Yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember if we really got hit or not. I probably about to hit me and knock me out. <laughs> so I can't remember. But yeah, that's love. That's love. That's a beautiful song. That's a church song, too. That's love. What kind of love? What kind of love is it that you would have for me, Lord? That you would, what they say, he stretched out his arms and he hung his head and he died. And then the song says again, that's love. Mm, that's love. That's love. That's love. Somebody would die for you. Mm, that's love. That's what Jesus said he died for. If you don't know him, get to know him. Get to know him. Oh, like I said, I always be saying I'm not going to say something, but then, like I said, that was on my heart, and I'm just a verbal person, and I, I say things to help people. I don't say things to try to be bad people. I, I'm like, but like I said, I did. Usually, I would never say that. <laughs> really, I wouldn't be saying nothing out here, so all of this is God, you know. Like I said, this would only be on my Facebook page. I'm not going to place it on the other page that I have, but uh, like I said, I got to go back tonight, and like I said, uh. I was saying it and I stopped. I, I'm not going to go with no animosity to him. You know what I'm saying? I have to learn to get along with people. You know, uh, I see people in the church trying to push that too. But yeah, I, I, I'm learning to, I need to learn to communicate with people and, and be more friendly with people. Uh, you know, be more more outspoken. <laughs> no, I don't need to be more outspoken, do I? Yeah, no, I don't need to be more outspoken, but I need to be a, uh, uh, I need to be around more people, but like I said, I don't have a problem with him. You know what I'm saying? I think he looks like I said now, hopefully, you know, who knows? He may, might change overnight, but it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's neither here nor there. Because if God wants me to be moved, he'll move me. It's, it's not by his will that I will be moved. So <laughs> there's nothing he can say I do for that. So when God says move, I move. You know what I'm saying? Which I really don't care. <laughs> Like I said, I'm going to look and see if I can transfer somewhere else for real. You know, so many other things I want to be doing anyway, so I don't know. I keep saying it's only a test. It's only a test. Something got a hold on me. I don't know. Uh, oh, like I said, I pray that you have a wonderful day. I'm, uh, I'll be back. When I come back, hopefully I have some good news about some things I'm trying to start. Oh, I need to take me a quick nap. Oh, Lord Jesus. 
It's raining here in Louisville. God bless you and keep you in. I pray for all those people that are suffering and going through oh just just so much pain and suffering. I caught one of the news reels and stuff like that. This, I'm, thank you, Jesus, to let you know it's not about me. It's not about me and uh, what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm all right. I get I got I got the king. <laughs> I got I, I got oh I got everything I need. Jesus is my all and all. He said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He said, uh, if I be for you, who can be against you? So I, he already got my back. So I don't need nobody else to have my back. So I'm not worried about her. So, But I was looking at the news. And um, uh, the news reporters put the mic up in this lady's face. And she's in the, uh, she's in the uh, uh, like a shelter or something, I think. And, and she has uh, two kids with her. And she goes, I mean, ballistic. And she's like, you're going to ask me this question. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, when I think about it. She said, you're going to ask me how I'm doing and all these type of questions. I'm standing here trying to protect my children. And it's raining on them and the water's right. And you were talking about that. You know, and that's basically what, what, where is, oh, God, give me the word, compassion. We're losing it. We're losing it. We're so busy. And I, I'm not going to condemn the news person because I know their bosses and stuff is telling them, get in there, get it. A lot of people don't know this about the news media. Like I said, I talk about them often, but like I said, I, I, I study people sometimes before I talk about them. Well, most of the time before I talk about them. <laughs> I'm not above God, so, but before I talk about them. Uh, news media people, they have to take and have their emotions. I bet you didn't know that. A lot of people don't know that. In order to perform their jobs, they they are informed. You don't come out here with no emotion. When you go in and you reporting a story, why do you think you don't see the news media break down crying when they find a baby that's dead or a child still in the dumpster? I see somebody's been murdered, you know what I'm saying? Or talking to serial killers. Why do you think they don't just lose it? Mainly because they kind of like program themselves. And that's how they deal. So that person was just caught up in their job. They wasn't caught up in their humanness. And that's sad, but, I mean, think about it. You know, it would blow your mind if every time a person got on there to report news, oh, my God, oh, I know what you, you know. So, I mean, you know, hats off to them. You know, there's a lot of powerful news people here in Kentucky, you know. And I know you have to do your job. And so... You know, I think that, you know, she yelled at them. I'm quite sure later on they, they broke down emotionally, but they was just caught up. You know, they trying to get there first. They trying to beat the other stations there. The reason I, I'm talking about I know a lot about it is because I've worked at a place. Uh, I worked at Churchill Downs where you have different all forms, all the big gigantic news people, and they come in here and they, they, they want to get in. They got to get the cameras, they got to get the crew in, they want to get the best seating, they want to get the best view, and that's what the audience, the public is relying on the best view, the most in information, the most accurate information, and that's what the news people try to, try to portray, <laughs> and that's so, but I felt, I felt so bad. My heart went out because, you know, it's like a glimpse. God shows you something for a reason, you know, and it was bam, you know. And I just, oh, wow, I just wanted to grab her and the babies, cause like, come on home, you know what I'm saying, or let me help you. And I hate to see that people suffering and, and, and your, your distance. You can help them financially, but people fail to realize that money can't buy everything. What about a hug? What about some compassion. What about a word? Some people don't want, at that time is a good time to get, to get a person to bring them to Christ, you know, is to be talking to them and tell them how, you know, are you going through this? And look, Jesus died. Look what the disciples crucified upside down because of what they believed. You know, you start talking to them about that because I used to always say, boy, how can you be a preacher? And somebody dying, you go in there and you're trying to talk to them and, and they loved one was murdered or something. And then, you know, like I said, you know what? Don't even ask that question. <laughs> Please don't ever ask that question. Don't even entertain that thought. 
because God showed up and he showed out. And I do know how. <laughs> you learn because you go through some trials and tribulations yourself and you give people what you get, not what you heard. Mm-hmm, yeah. And so when a person's in a situation like that, you tell them what you've been through. Yeah, if they're willing to listen for that moment, you start telling them what you've been through. And really, when you tell a person what you've been through, how you've been hurt, how you've been through trials and tribulations, not maybe to that capacity at that time, but you know what it's like to suffer. I know I do. I know what it's like to suffer. I know what it's like to, to not know where your next help is coming from. Being there, that's a part of being poor. It's poverty. Mm-hmm. That's being poor and poverty. And, and poor don't have a color on it. I've never seen it. What the color is poor? Black, white, green, yellow, pink. What color is poor? Purple? I, I don't know what color poor is. I don't know what color is poverty. What color is waiting for your paycheck to come and then when you get it, you still broke? <laughs> yeah, what color is that? Yeah. Mm hmm. Lord Jesus. Yeah. But, yeah, I would love to sit there and talk to them and just hold them children and, 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 and take and bathe them and put them in some warm, fresh pajamas. You know what I'm saying? And, and tell them some bedtime stories, you know, even though they're sitting in a center and you just want to rock them. Because I know what it's like. I do. I know what it's like to be in a shelter with your child. And you got to sit up and you got to watch over your child to make sure don't nobody do your child any physical uh, sexual harm. Yeah. I would love to sit there and tell her about how God loves her no matter what she's going through. No matter what her children are going through. Don't turn your back on God, baby. Don't turn your back on God. Don't blame him for everything, you know, whatever the situation. Don't just blame him, and you know, I mean, even if you blame him still, don't turn your back on him, love him. Because I know God did some things to me, but hey, I still sit back like, wow, what, you know, and I might not know why, but I'm not going to turn my back on him, I still love him, you know. And uh, like I said, I just pray for people in that. And I pray, you know, I don't know if a lot of people have thought about this. But with this occurrence happening, just imagine there's a lot of people, which you not imagine, it's a fact, that was in uh, Hurricane Katrina. All this is coming back to their memory, and that caused them to be dispersed, like the Tower of Babel. It caused them to be dispersed through all different parts of the state, and it's causing the churches that are, were, was in that location to take a whole lot of, a, a whole lot of flat. So, you know, a whole, lot of, a whole lot of anger, you know, a whole, a whole lot of questionable things about God and things they need to answer. And so it, 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 it's, it's making them wake up. It's challenging their faith and their cause, too, in life. So I pray that God bless all, all the people there. I pray that, uh, oh, Lord, I pray for shelter. I pray for food. I pray for the help that everyone needs. Be given to them. I pray for the people that are still in the house. I, I was listening at work about somebody was still in the house, it locked locked in the house, and people was calling on the phone for nine one one. Woo, Lord Jesus, we need to be thankful. These are times we need to be thankful for where we are. We run around arguing and starting stuff, speaking with people, you know. But we need to be thankful, thankful to God. But for the grace of God, it could be us. You know what I'm saying? Be our children like that. We need to be thankful. We need to start treating one another with compassion and with kindness and with love. Christ is love. We need, we need Christ's love. We don't need that love, love. We need Christ's love. We need to start treating people like that. You know, we need to look. Also, I'm watching TV and, and, and it's something about a murder or something, you know? And I'm like, wow, you know? Wow. You know, it seems like... A break would come, but evidently not. So, yeah, I'm going into a long time out here. Like I said, God bless everyone. I, I pray for uh, God. Put on, I pray for everyone that puts into me. I pray for everyone that helps me, seen and unseen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for placing me in places and, and, and in the view of people that can help lead and guide me. I pray for all of the word of God, all the messages, all the sermons, all the preachers and stuff that's preaching. And the words go to me, whether they know it or not. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you have bestowed on our lives. I pray, Lord, for all the people that are for me. And I pray for the people that are against me. I pray for my haters, Lord. I pray for my loved ones. I pray for my family. All my family. I pray that you watch over and protect them and protect their children. I pray that they 
go to and fro from school safely, Lord. I pray that you watch over the school system, Lord. I pray for the gun violence and all the bullying and all the types of endangerment that can occur in schools. I pray that it does not enter in the name of Jesus. Why can I ask? I wish prayer was back in school, Lord. We need it. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Peace. 